Good evening, my dear fiends. I am Bobby Gam Monster of Monster Movie Night, your creepio curator of Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, along with my host, co-host, <laughs> Boris T. Buzzard. <laughs> Welcome and happy new fear, my dear fiends. Happy new fear and a new season, season 15. And this is our episode one to start off the year. Hey, eh, Boris? <laughs> <laughs> and what a film we have to start it off with. It stars John Carradine and John Ireland. <laughs> it's called The House of Seven Corpses. <laughs> well, how classier can you get than that, eh, Boris? <laughs> so, my dear fiends, let me turn right around here and, of course, cue it in to our haunted internet keyboard. There we go. <laughs> That's right. House of Seven Corpses, John Carradine and John Ireland. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now, we will tune it into the old internet haunted TV. Ah, works perfectly as ever. <laughs> will you? Ah, uh, we'll never let you out. <laughs> Not until at the end of the show, anyway, eh? Excellent, excellent. Now, let's go to the old uh, in, uh, haunted projector that our good fiend, uh, Lieutenant Dennis Rogers, sent to us last year. <laughs> and let's see if I can find the button to turn it on. It's here somewhere. Okay, have to look it up. Ah, oh, there it is. I don't know why I keep going that high with it. There we go. <laughs> Let's go to it, my dear fiends.
tetragrama, Tony. Sódalo. Oceos. Isquiros. Águila. Pantagrama, Tony. Satai. Satai. I conjure thee, O evil and cursed serpent, to appear at my wish and pleasure in this place within this circle. No! 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 No way! No! That's not how it happened. Who said that? Cut it. Cut it, I said! What the hell are you doing up there? You just blew my whole scene. What about me? My scene is blue. I'm terribly sorry, but it's just not the way Mrs. Beale committed suicide. I know how she committed suicide, so don't try to tell me how to shoot my picture. I suggest you stay with the truth. The story of the Beale family is more bizarre than anything you can dream up. Tell me about it. I'll be happy to. Well, that's Mr. Price, huh? What's his first name, Vincent? No, Edgar. Go. Where are our rooms? On 
On the third floor. The third floor it is. Well, après vous, ma chère. Bryce, you just killed this whole scene for me. You insulted my intelligence and embarrassed me in front of the cast and crew. Now, none of that's going to happen again. Is that clear? My apologies, Mr. Hartman, but I only acted in the interest of the crew. An assumption, apparently, that does not interest you. Everything about the field interests me. But I don't discuss my films with caretakers. So. Why is he so mean to the old man? You've got to keep the devil in his place. David, he's serious. I am, I am. Perhaps these portraits could help you select your story points a little more accurately. For instance, Jonathan Anthony Beale, founding Harvard, the first Beale to live in this house, the first one to die here. He fell off this balcony right here where we're standing. Fell or was pushed? Who knows? The only one here when it happened was his housekeeper. Just like you and Mrs. Beale, hmm? Suzanne, drowned in her own bath. Here we have Theodore. Shot to death. Another suicide? He was shot five times in the back. Determined bastard, wasn't he? Allison. I know, I know. Allison Beale died by hanging. Yes, from the door up there. Don't ask me how she got there. Here. Charles. Stabbed to death, wasn't he? By his own wife. Russell, my first employer. Bludgeoned to death. Yeah, with a candle holder. How did you know that? I'm the one that found this mansion for you, remember? What about those two? And this one will be the portrait of the late Mrs. Beale. The other was placed there by her request. Beale's still alive? Not that I know. And here are your rooms. This way, please. Hey, I really like this room. Yeah, has a nice feel to it. Not exactly the Beverly Hilton, is it? This was Suzanne's bedroom. Oh, yes, the one who drowned. As a matter of fact, yes. This way. Here we go. The back stairs. Another staircase. For the servants, ghosts, I have no doubt. No, just for the servants. The bathroom. Shower. Ah, Madame Salapoudre. Does it work? Hmm. Very well. <laughs> Running water. How chic. Find a shot, Eric? Maybe. No lights. There haven't been any lights in this house since Mrs. Beale passed away. We've got generators for the film. No end to this kid's knowledge. And when we're not filming, how do we find our rooms in the dark? By candlelight. If there's a bed in it, she'll find it. David, look at this. Gail. As you can see, this is, was the master bedroom. I know, I know, built by the original owner. Will there be anything else? No, Mr. Price, I think you've done enough for one day. Mr. Price. Thank you for your tour. I can understand why the old lady committed suicide. With that vampire around. Well, Annie, you're safe. You're wearing your cross. Gail, you have your wooden stake? Oh, well, well, look what I found, the proverbial hidden door. Well, open it, open it. What are you waiting for, a stunt check? Hmm. The 
is the room we shot the scene in. Yeah, I know. That must be the secret entrance. What's that, Eric? The old evil eye. I'm using it in the film. That's supposed to be bad luck. Oh, come on. You don't believe that stuff. No, I guess not. that cat's eyes on me all through the sea. Imagine that a cat. Oh, Leon! How dare you hit my cat? But he scratched me. I wish he'd bitten you. If he did, I'd break his neck. You touch my cat again and I'll break your neck. Stop it. Enough. I've had enough too. I'm going to bed. May Morpheus take you swiftly to his arms, dear lady. Should he fail, I am always at your service. That'll be the day. David. What are you saying? These books. The Art of Witchcraft. The Black Mass. Tibetan Book of the Dead. Thaumma. 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 Black Magic. Tibetan Book of the Dead. Just another one of those how-to books. Hey, take this. Prince of Sharman, Majesty of Phlegathon, Belial, Ellis, Azazel, Bleed My Soul, Apollyon, Lord of Amenti, Possess Me. I seek your kingdom. Let me see this. You think we can use it, Eric? Well, it may be garbage, but it's better garbage than what the writer gave us. Here, see if you can find some lines for the chant in it. Oh, yeah, I'll be happy to. Why are you so interested? I love this kind of stuff. Like fairy tales, huh? Sure. Fairy tales can come true. Shoes. Who did you leave? David! Save your passion for the camera. Let's have a little restraint. Scenes always go better when they're under control. Anything for you, darling? Ron, get a little of this red off her cheeks and fix her eyes. She looks like a whore. You want the drapes open or close? Anything for you, darling. Put a double on the table, will you? Joe, don't forget to rack focus when you're through with that. Okay, pinch the doors on the junior. No, a little more. No, 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 man, there. They give us those goddamn sandwiches again. I'll slip out of my head all the I got no power! Put the plug in, you dummy. Close the doors on that junior. Now the one in the corner. Give me a double on that baby, will you? Eric, Eric I found some great lines in the book. You want to check it over before we start? Okay, use that one. Danny, let's try one. Okay, heat that one up. Let's see what happens. Bring the girls in. Come on, girls. Now get that cable out of the way. It's in the shop. Give me your high priestess voice. And <coughs> get down on your knees. Now you're supposed to be going into a trance. All right. All right, Danny, let's try one. Roll it. Speed, mark it. 24, take one. <coughs> Action! Omniski edim adamo. Omniski edim adamo. Omniski edim adamo. Omniski 
Hey, dear Mardimo. Cut it, cut it, cut! I said you were supposed to be going into a trance, not an orgasm. I'm sorry. Let's try it again with a little more restraint this time. That's today's secret word, restraint. All right, let's go. Well, I'm a little hot on that book. A little more. A little more. That's got it. Okay. I row. Rowing. And mark it. Row camera. It's laid it. 24 takes two. Action. Omnis key. Edim Adamo. Omnis key. Edim Adamo. Participavimus atque asapente. Participavimus atque asapente. In fraudimen ducti sumus. In fraudimen ducti sumus. Radimantus erebus charans. Lords of death, witness me in this. Marinia! God's name, what are you doing? Charles, you fool, you should not have come. In the name of Jesus, Maria, I demand... I say silence. His satanic majesty summoned this man. Slay him. Slay him? Maria, what are you saying? Maria, Maria for God's sake, what are you... No. No. Maria, no! Ah! Cut! That's good for me. Very good for you, too. <laughs> Fine, that was good. Okay, let's move in for close-ups of the stabbing. Do I have to get rigged? You'll get rigged. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ron, you can do it. Show us how you're rigged. <laughs> Action. Uh, 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 oh! Oh! Bleeding like a trooper. All right, let's get this corpse cleaned up and ready for the next scene. You were great. Thanks. How's it feel to kill somebody? I don't like it. Well, yeah, you'll get used to it. Enjoying the movie so far, my dear fiends? <laughs> so glad. You know, I'd like to start the year or the new fear off with a little recognition of a wonderful artist called Dave Dunlap. Now, he, uh, you've seen it last year before. He sent us a wonderful uh, portrait of uh, myself. And, but he did it again, again, and he's so wonderful. I'd like to do a scream out for Dave Dunlap. And this is the wonderful uh, rendition of art that he sent to me. Of myself, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> and I just wanted to do a wonderful scream out to Dave, to Dave Dunlap for, and he's done not only myself, my own portrait, portraiture, but uh, other horror hosts as well, and some movies uh, too. And and you should see the really uh, great color type artwork that he's done. So check him out on uh, Facebook on the internet at uh, Dave Dunlap. <laughs> He's so wonderful. Well, let's get back to tonight's feature, eh? <laughs> now, for the fifth time, you are running down the hall and down the stairs into camera. You are running, not strolling or walking, but running and see if you can do it without falling. All right, all right. Save your sarcasm for Anne. She's still impressionable. Stand by to roll. You ready? I'm ready, I'm ready. Mark it. 183, Apple takes five. Action! Cut! You want to see what you can do when you have talent? That was good for me, Danny. The Rembrandt. Print it and wrap. Good day's work. Good day's work. 
At Metro, that would have been a week's work. <laughs> Honey, you're going up. I'll join you in a minute. Danny, there's a lot of good moonlight outside. Let's go shoot some of it. Don't you ever sleep? Would you sleep if it were your money? No way. Well, get on your horse and let's grab some atmosphere. Okay. You fog that film, I'll eat your aorta. To the multitudes assembled at my feet, I regretfully bid fond adieu to go and seek sleep, gentle sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. Gentle, perchance you wonder at this show, then wonder on, till truth make all things plain. <laughs> this man, This man... Here's boring. Honey, you should read some of this stuff. It's incredible. I don't want to read it. Listen to this. To you in blood, I give my soul, O master of the dark. David, please, that makes me uncomfortable. Ah, oh, come on, honey. Everybody else thinks it's phony. Why don't you? Why don't you ask Mr. Price? What? What are you talking about? He's in the graveyard. David, come here, look. What's he doing? Stopping at headstones as though he's looking for something. I can't help him. This place. He gives me the willies. Annie, you're imagining things. I'm not imagining it. I feel it. I feel something's going to happen. Something terrible. 
I'm sorry, David. I'm just scared. But just look at him. Okay, so he's a creep. Maybe, maybe looking at headstones is his thing. Come on. We got our own thing. My darling, don't you see? I can bring you pleasures you've only dreamed of until now. You needn't fear. You needn't fear. Touch me. Feel the power you can share. Who is it? Is anyone there? Is anyone there? Leon? Don't give arm, my child. Besides, you're a French charming. You're drunk. <laughs> Perhaps. 
but most assuredly not enough to forget how to treat a lady like yourself. <laughs> Look out for the lamp, I'll drop it. No. no. Can we pass like nips in the slight? I mean, ships in the slight. Let me go. No. We must seize this moment. Let me go. Ah. Don't you ever touch me, you drunken bum. Mr. Mellon. Tonight is your business. Tomorrow morning is mine at 8 a.m. if you haven't already been told. Eric, I'm so glad you came. I'll bet you are. Oh, what do you mean by that crack? You don't think for one Ladies minute I meant... Ladies and gentlemen, I bid you good evening as he exits laughing. If you didn't come by, that maniac would have raped me. You're sure dressed for it. Well, I was looking for Cleon. He got out of my room. He's down here someplace. He's a big kitty now. He can take care of himself. Eric, please. Listen, baby, we're going to be shooting early in the morning, and you've got to get some sleep. Or there'll be bags under our bags. And there isn't enough makeup in the world to cover that up. You still want me to be beautiful, don't you? I always want you to be beautiful. Was I beautiful in the first movie you put me in? Breathtaking. Do you still think I'm beautiful? To me, you'll always be beautiful. Thank you, darling. in the morning. Eric! David, please, don't leave me alone. I'm too nervous. Don't worry, Annie. I'll only be gone a second. I just want to check something out with Eric. Check what? Uh, Eric, we, uh... Well, we... Uh... Well, what is it? Eric, David's trying to tell you that... We saw Mr. Price in the graveyard. Yeah, I know. You know? You saw it too? Saw it. I directed it. What? I was filming some of the graveyard stuff when old Princely Price arrived. I asked him if he'd move through the tombstones for one of the shots, and surprisingly enough, he agreed. Do you mean you staged it? That's right. What about when he went into the grave? What? He lifted a tombstone and disappeared. Did you stage that too? No. Good night. Come on. One more, bro. Well, I need a sea stand. Put on my double wardrobe now. Double wardrobe on my budget? You've got to be kidding. But I'm soaked. We've been out here for hours. We'd be inside if you get the damn scene right. All you have to do is walk away from cameras if you're in a hurry. You don't care about the rain. That's what you think. Because you're going to meet your lover. Now, if you can manage to convey that and walk at the same time, we'll all go inside. Slate it. Take seven. Let's make one. Hit the rain! Roll sound. Hey. 
Action! Why can't you walk any faster? Now go to the left. Hey, that's for real. Cut the rain! <laughs> One of you bastards did this. One of you. That's all I need, another day's work shot. Why would anyone do anything that awful? Eric. looking for the silver, it's in the main house. Mr. Price, this is the last time you'll interfere with my filming. Are you mad? I haven't been near your filming. Stop playing games. Why did you kill that cat? What? Sometime last night, half of Miss Dorian's cat was neatly deposited on the lawn. Are you accusing me of this vulgarity? Part of a headstone was found nearby. I took it to be your calling card. A headstone? Was there a name? No. Sure? No name on the headstone? None. I didn't expect you'd sign it. You're insane. Am I? 
What are you doing with that chisel? Baking a cake? Hmm. Obviously, you'll give me no peace until you've ransacked my entire house. Close the door. Stuff are things you know nothing about. What's there to know about headstones except death? That's only part of it. The other part is graves, Mr. Hartman. Graves. Now, what are you talking about? There are eight graves in the Beale family plot, Mr. Hartman. Only seven headstones. We'll make another one. I would, but I haven't been able to find out whose grave it is. Now, that is one momentous problem. This way. Nice place you have here. Your family room. Strange things have happened here, Mr. Hartman. Unimaginable things. That's why I'm making my picture here, Price. Other than that, I don't give a damn. Mr. Hartman. Mrs. Beale was experimenting with the occult when she died. Her death was no ordinary suicide, I assure you. What you're doing here, the, the subject matter of your film, whatever... I believe you to be in great danger yourself. Price, I've made a lot of films, mostly about witchcraft. And you and I... both know that it's all a lot of crap. Perhaps, perhaps not. But there are signs, Mr. Hartman. I've seen them. This cat that was killed. What is it, Price? The devil? Did the devil kill the cat? Or maybe a ghost or a vampire? Or what about you? I should have realized it would do no good to try to talk to you. I'm glad we both understand each other. Since you found your own way in, I'm sure you can manage to find your own way out. I'll do that. Good day, sir. And you stay off my set. going on here. What is this, a tea break? No actress, no lights, no shoot. What? Madam has played her final farewell performance. Where is she? In her room, packing. Finish setting up in here. We'll shoot in 10 minutes. for a scene, Eric. I just can't take this place anymore. This house, this movie. I just can't stand it another minute. I'm going back to Hollywood if I have to hitchhike. Okay, baby. I understand. In the meantime, what am I supposed to do with my movie? Well, get a new ending. Do it on a set. I don't care, Eric. I just want to go home. Do it on the set. Baby, we gotta finish this picture tonight, here. You know what it would cost me to move into the studio and build a set? I gotta bring this in for a price. No, money, money. Is that all you can think about? What about me? I tell you, I feel threatened and I can't stand it another minute. Same old ego, still working, huh? I, I, I. Everything for Gail, the hell with everyone else. No, Eric, you don't have to... Listen, baby. What you're pulling might have worked in the studios ten years ago, but not here and not now. And sure as hell not on my picture. Eric, you're hurting me. Okay. Go on, leave.
but you're walking all right. And when you get there, you're going to find out just how tough it is for a middle-aged beauty queen to get a job in the acting profession. Or even in the profession I first found you in. I'll expect you on the set in ten minutes. In your wardrobe. <laughs> you forget, sister. You have taken vows. Well, to the devil. I'll go to the priest. Beg for forgiveness. There is no forgiveness. They will burn you at the stake for your sins. Then we will run. They'll hunt you like an animal. Running away is not an answer. It's my answer. Don't you see, Maria? I love him. That means nothing. Angela, I forbid it. You will ruin everything that I've worked for. I absolutely forbid it. There's nothing you can do about it. We're going to you today. And I say you are not. Maria, what are you doing? My God, Maria, I'm your sister. Maria, you've gone crazy. What's happened? Roll over. Come on. All right, get her on the floor. Look out for the knife, huh? Good, good. All right, David. Come on in. Maria! Angela! Cut! Good for me. How is it for you? We're here. Print it. Ron, set up for the stabbing. Yeah. Where is it? Okay, put it on him. Come on, let's go. Gail, stay under him when you stab him. I want to see plenty of blood on you. All right, come on, get on your marks. All right, girls, never mind your hair. You're supposed to be in a fight, not a beauty contest. Come on, Ron, get out of there. Come on. That's fine. Let's go. Place it. Right where you are, right there. Camera ready? Ready. Okay, roll camera. Rolling. End slate. Fall into it, that's right. Ready? Action. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Stop it. Do you hear me? Stop it. Maria. Angela. Maria. Oh, my God. Maria. Now you have no reason to leave, ever. Oh. Oh Cut it. That's good for me. How was it for camera? Beauty. Okay for sound? Okay for sound. Print it. No, you look awful. For a dead man, I don't feel too bad. <laughs> we'll get it on me, okay? Very good. Thanks. Cut up for the last shot. We'll shoot in an hour and a half. An hour and a half? You mean I have an hour and a half to change my clothes, redo my wardrobe, and be ready? You're the man. You know, that's just what the movies need. Another pretty face. How do I look? Great. You look awful. Let's make a movie. Now you know what you'll look like when you're dead. That's rather handsome, actually. Just 
What is so interesting about that book? I don't know. Well, why do you keep reading it? I think we can use it in the film. We already have. I think we can use it again. And I've got it. Listen to this. David, it's not good for you to read things like that. Exergent, mortuai, et od me vorient. The dead rise and come to me. Exergent, mortuai, et od me vorient. Mortuai, et od me vorient. The dead rise and come to me. Stop it! Stop it! What's the matter? That, that book, that awful book. Oh, honey, it was written a thousand years ago. Well, it sounds like it was just written yesterday. It's so official, so real. I don't like it. It's just so... Scary. Yes. Well, I know, it, it's scary as hell, and that's why we should use it in the film. Why? Authenticity. It'll give the picture a feeling of authenticity. Get all the lights. Get the actors down here. Let's make a movie. Gail, okay, hold the book up. I haven't got the book. Where's the book? I got it. Sorry, Eric. Okay, okay. Now, hold it up, Gail. I want to zoom in on it. How do you want me to read it? The way we rehearsed it. Chris? Chris! Oh, where the hell is Chris? You called. Yeah, yeah. Look, when you come up, come up slowly. And don't stop once we start rolling, okay? Gotcha. Eric? Yeah? How do you want me to die? What? Well, I've never died before, and I don't know how to. Maybe we've been through all this before. But we didn't rehearse the actual dying. You back away, he grabs you and hits you with a candelabra. You just fall down and be dead. Okay. okay. Trust me. Dying's easy. Living's hard. Let's try one. Fix their hoods. Chris, will you hold this a minute? Come on, come on, hurry it up. Okay. Camera ready? Ready. Roll it. Rolling? Slate it. 227, take one. Action. 
Exurgent mortuae. Et ad me vurient. Cut! Somebody light the damn candles. Come on, come on, hurry up. Get them lit. All right, let's go again. Camera ready? Ready. Stand by. Roll camera. Rolling. Slate it. 227, take two. <clears throat> Action. Exurgent, mortuai. Et ad me vurient. Ad me vurient. Exurg. Cut! Eric, this book is very old. It's just not that easy to follow. It's the same damn line read three times. What's so difficult? I'm sorry. Okay, let's go again. Please. Camera ready? Camera ready. Roll camera. Slate it. 227, take three. Action! Exurgent mortuai. Exurgent mortuai, et ad me vurient. Exurgent mortuai. At odd may worrient. Café, Cassita, non café la in publia fili. Omnibus Suisse. Café. Casita. Non café la. Et publia fili, omnibus suis. Come, my darling. I have been awaiting your return from the dead. You see, my sister? You see the power? Let go of me. I command you. Let go. 
Now straight ahead. Now go to the left. Keep going. Don't change your pace. That's it. Go on. Good. Keep going. Cut. Print it. That was great. I don't know how it was for you, but it was great for me. You all right, baby? See, baby? I told you dying was easy. Yeah, it was fun. Eric, do you think we could do that again? You are funny. You ought to play comedy. Where'd you get hurt? Oh, stop it. Did you see all of it? Everything. How was it? You're a very groovy corpse. <laughs> but messy. Yeah. Beautiful, baby. Just beautiful. Beautiful. Look at me. I am, and you are beautiful. Now get yourself cleaned up. I'll see you first thing in the morning. In the morning? Yeah, when we leave. Eric. Eric, can't we leave tonight? I still have some exterior stuff to shoot. What, is that going to take the whole night? Half. Well, what about the other half? Who knows? We going to get some graveyard stuff tonight, Eric? Yeah, Dave and I will handle it. You stay here and pack up the equipment. Come on, David, let's go. Okay. Ron, would you help Anne get cleaned up? How do you take this stuff off? Security acid. And so to sleep. The chance to dream. The arms, the hands that dispatched a thousand souls bid you good night.
You know, Eric was right. About what? There's no end to this kid's knowledge. <laughs> okay, I'll take it to the truck itself. No, that's okay, Tom. I'll get it. Ron, I'd sort of like the smoke. Let me do it. I don't want to get too much light on this, so keep your camera high. Okay, what lens do you want? I'll tell you when we get there.
Somebody scream? It's a stupid question. Probably found the other half of her dear departed kitty cat. Oh, condolences are in order. You know, my dear fiends, tonight's feature should be a warning to you all, especially those who find old occult books uh, in the attic somewhere or basement or where have you. <laughs> you know, be very careful as what you read aloud. Uh, you may read it, of course, but don't say the words aloud until you are ready and know fully what to expect. <laughs> because, you know, just playing around with such things as this, well, it's kind of dangerous. <laughs> you know, books such as, well, like our ones that we have in our museum, all cursed objects and items, you know. <laughs> and they look good on the outside. And, of course, they have wonderful pictures on the inside. And, and uh, incantations and woodcut stills and, and all sorts of things like that. But once you open them up and you decide to read from these books and put the candles out and the incense and all the things like this, the paraphernalia, and sometimes not even doing that, just reading the words itself can cause great and tremendous effects <laughs> sometimes not in your own favor. <laughs> so, our little warning to you from the Library of Gargoyle Manor, the Munster Museum. If you come across an old book like this, and if you're 
well, if you're a little fearful of it, bring it on over. We'll stick it into our museum and uh, make sure that it doesn't get into the wrong hands. <laughs> Let's go back to the night's feature, shall we? <laughs> Where the hell have you been? All right, hit your lamp. I'm gonna pan slowly over the tombstones to the right. I said slowly. grave is empty. <laughs> what the hell did you do that for? What's the matter with you? Nothing. I just wanted you to see the grave. That's all. What the hell is the matter with you? David! 
Crazy or something?
by Evil Boris. Did you see that ending? <laughs> well, it's a wonderful, happy ending for us monsters, eh? <laughs> you know, that just proves, goes to show you to prove that, well, you should not mess around with the occult if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, the dead will rise and take you back to their graves. <laughs> Something to think about when you get ready for your own bed tonight, my dear fiends. <laughs> well, until next time, and as always, we hope that you'll tune in back to Monster Movie Night. And as always, <laughs> keep screaming.